All right, this is a, a basic 4150 Holly. It's a 600, what we call a double pumper. I'm just gonna do a, like I say, this is just an intro introduction to Holly carburetors. I'm gonna show you some things about them, what to look for, just minor things. And then later on, if you have the specific problems, like we'll go into the idle circuits, we'll go real in depth on different videos for you, cause I, it would take me quite a while to explain to you how to repair something in one circuit to do it right and we'd need to focus just on that but we got a we got accelerator pumps in the front accelerator pump in the back on a double pumper now what we're looking for why the engine just that curb idle we're looking to see if we got any clearance in that pump right there and we shouldn't have now what we're going to do I like to run my pumps at zero. I like them to be when I get my idle set the last thing I'll do is come back and double check that pump and make sure I don't have no clearance problem. So I'm going to make a little adjustment here until I get all that clearance out of there. Alright, now we have no clearance in there. It's about zero. And we want to make sure under wide open throttle conditions we have a little movement there about 10 thousandths is what Holly tells you you want to have there well we don't have no bind in the accelerator pump circuit now what we're going to do also is we're going to look on the sides here and here is the two screws that set the float level so we're going to take the screw out and we're going to if the motor's been running, you shut it off to do this part here, or if you have electric pump, you just turn the ignition on and turn your electric pump on for a second and see if you got fuel right at the bottom of these threads. Now, the best way to do it is just to shake the side of the car a little, and if fuel comes out, it's right at the bottom, you're good. If it's not, let's say it's flowing out of this screw, we want to make sure we cut everything off, and then we want to take our screwdriver, Loosen up the needling seat. Make sure we got the actual adjustment screw loose and then we'll turn clockwise, looking down from the top of it to lower the float level. And of course, after we lower it, we'll need to tighten it back up and then run the motor and then check your float level again because we'll have to use that gas out of the float before it's going to be regulated down. And if it's down far enough to where it's at the threads, you just want to keep making moves until you get it to the threads. Or if you don't see none in the bowl, we want to loosen it up and we want to go counterclockwise. And then we'll tighten it up and then we'll recheck it again until we get it up to the bottom of these threads. Now that's what we want to do on the primary and the secondary. You want them both at the bottom of the thread right here. Now, let's stick this back in real quick. We also want to make sure the pump on the secondary doesn't have no play and it's, it's right about on the money. Okay. This here is the actual idle screw that we're going to be idling by right here. We take a flathead screwdriver, clockwise raises the idle, counterclockwise lowers it. We need to be idling somewhere in the neighborhood. Uh, it varies with different motors. With the, If you've got a lot of camshaft and all, sometimes they'll idle up there, you know, 1200 RPMs, 1300 RPMs. But we want to, most, most motors, street motors, we want to see about a thousand or less if we can. And sometimes we do run into problems with the idle circuit not wanting to adjust. But I'm going to show you how it is. You warm the motor up. Now, we're, we're assuming that we have a good motor, that it's running properly as far as the ignition's up to par, and the timing's set properly, because that needs to be set before any carburetor adjustments are done. And then, after we warm it up, we get it idling, let's say, 800 to 1,000 RPMs, we start bringing this in nice and slow. Well, let me, I've got ahead of myself here. Before you start the motor up, let's, let's take these and run them all the way in. We're going to run them in until they stop. Then we're going to do a basic back out of one and a half turns. 
that'll be on both sides. <laughs> then we'll start our motor up, run it. And then, once we get it up to operating temperature, then we're going to bring this screw real gently. And we, we need either a tachometer, portable tachometer, or even a little vacuum gauge hooked to manifold vacuum. And you'll hear the motor, you'll hear the motor start changing if it, everything's all right in the idle circuit. It's going to actually start dropping as we screw inward clockwise. Now, as we come back out, it's going to start smoothing out, smoothing out. What we want to do is peak the vacuum gauge, the setting on the vacuum gauge for the highest vacuum or the tachometer for the highest RPM. These are on old hot rods now. They're sitting in mission control vehicles. We'll do the same thing to the other side. We'll, we'll go in slowly clockwise till we feel the motor start running rough. Then we'll come out and get our peak RPM on both sides and then come back and if you need to bring the idle up down, up or down just a little, do your final adjustment. Now there's there's all kinds of carburetors. That's there, There's times when you're going to have a, a choppy cam in the motor and this idle circuit, it ain't going to want to even, you can run these screws all the way in on some of them, won't change a thing. Our in-depth video, or we're going to show you how to modify and change things to, to fix that, to make it work properly, where if they won't adjust, they will when we get through. This carburetor here is a 600 double pumper. It's got a straight leg booster on it. Now this isn't a real performance, real performance oriented carburetor. It's semi, but it, when you get into a, let's say a, a hot rod type, more of a performance oriented carburetor, you're going to have these boosters, these round, and we call them step down boosters because the booster drops down towards this Ventura area in here. This right here, the smallest area around here is the Ventura. This is the booster. The fuel is going to flow right out of the bottom of the booster there. But the further this booster is down into this little narrow part of the Ventura, the easier and the quicker it's going to get a signal. Where if you look at this one, compared to that one, you can see a lot of difference in the actual booster, how far it's in there. All right, now there, there's all kinds of carburetors. There's, there's uh, the Ultra Hollies that are super, super good carburetor. I'm not here to endorse Holly. But they are, they are very, very good. That Ultra Series that they just come out with has so many adjustments that make it so easy to, to adjust your carburetor properly. And we'll get into the different adjustments that they have. And, and they're just, it saves having to do a lot of modifications sometimes because you can adjust everything from the top. These, these little air bleeds right here, the outboard ones, are actually your idle circuit. The inboard ones are your high speed bleeds. So we got low speed idle bleeds outboard and then we got the high speed air bleeds on the inside. These outboard ones just control idle air into the idle circuit. These middle ones that's closer to the center control air feed into the main well, the jet system, which actually helps emulsify the fuel in both sides. Now, some of these carburetors, and I don't have one here with me right now, but they have a screw-in air bleed here. And these little air bleeds are all screw-in and they're adjustable. And you can take them out, change them to a different size, and that's a big help sometimes when you're fine-tuning something, especially on the idle circuit. And uh, we also got the accelerator pump discharge nozzles right here. Usually they average anywhere from about 25 to 30 thousandths each hole on each side. This is when the accelerator pump, when we've mashed the throttle and that arm comes down, it, it squirts the fuel up through the carburetor and then out these two holes. Well, we get into a lot of times we get into a stumble right off idle and we can sometimes just take this what do I call it? Accelerator pump discharge housing out or shooter people call them. And if it's at a 25, maybe try a 28 in there. And then see if you make sure your, your linkage is adjusted right when you get through. 
and see if you get out of a little stumble condition. That's just a quickie. That so, a lot of times we do run into to that type of problem, and it fixes a lot of problems. Uh, one thing I do want to talk about real quick. I've heard a lot of information on the internet, and I don't want to get in depth on this right now. But the power valve. These power valves do not have nothing to do with the idle circuit. There's a big myth out there. People think that if the power valve is open at idle, it's going to make it run rich. It's not going to have no effect on the idle circuit. And unless this diaphragm right here is ruptured, because we got manifold vacuum on the back side here, or if this gasket right here is leaking, that's the only two things that's going to affect the idle on this power valve. If it's functioning properly, whether it's miss the wrong inch power valve like this one here is a 45 inch. That means that four and a half inches of vacuum, I say 45 inch, I meant 4.5 inches of vacuum. When 4.5 inches of vacuum is drawn on this side of the diaphragm, it closes that power valve and that's closed. When the vacuum on this side, you accelerate and it drops, it opens and it's just like another set of jets basically that's all it is the jets in these carburetors are made to run the motor at any given speed at a steady state when you go to accelerate that's why we need the accelerator pump to squirt and we need the power valve to cut in to rich in the mixture to get up to where we're going then when we level off that power valve is going to nine percent times going to be closed when you're at a steady speed and you've got the right power valve in it. It's only used to increase the fuel mixture under acceleration. Now, a lot of people block off the rear power valve. I do myself. I, I don't like to have the rear power valve. I do run one in the front. But if you're looking for economy, you're better off to use power valves front and rear. Uh, that's just kind of a brief overview of all these these, this is just a Holly double pumper. I'm going to do one on a Holly 4160. These are 4150s, and uh, which is vacuum secondaries. I'll try to do some 1810s and maybe some list number 3310s and show you the vacuum circuit, how it works, and the basic basics of the carburetor. But I'm going to do more videos. If y'all like this, I'll do more videos, and I'll go in depth. I'll show you how to fix the idle circuit on one that's too rich. Everybody's sitting around there with tears running out of their eyes. Nobody likes that too much. So we, we can modify a few things, and we can get that corrected, get a much crisper, smoother, cleaner idle. Uh, and, and again, I just want to tell you that the power valve has nothing to do with it. Don't let nobody tell you that because it's wrong. Uh, a power valve is nothing but an enrichment. It only works with the main well system. And if you look, if you look right here, I don't know if they can see that, but there's the idle circuit comes right off of this hole right in here transfers into this little fixed orifice, which is a uh, is what's controlling the fuel mixture to the idle circuit. Then it comes up here and it drops down and comes into the main body. It's, it cannot the power valve just does not have anything to do with it. The power valve is there for nothing but to enrich the fuel mixture, just like another set of jets on your main well system, your high speed fuel flow. All right, guys, that's all for right now. If I missed anything, this is our first video we done. Uh, I would uh, I, I would just like to know how you feel about this video, and if you like it, I'll go really in-depth. I've got 40-plus years of working and rebuilding these carburetors, and I've learned a lot over these years. I'm not trying to brag or anything, but I will try to set some things straight for you and actually show you how to fix different kinds of conditions We'll, we'll break it down into the idle circuit, the power valve, jet, main well circuit. We'll just keep knocking away each circuit until you get a good understanding of the full operation of the carburetor. When you do that, then you know when you get that little off idle stumble or you've got a problem up high speed, you kind of know where to look. And that's very important to know 
about where which circuits working at that speed and uh, and what that throttle where you're at and that way we can tend to correct it get a good idea usually of, of where the problem is and how to fix it uh, I guess that's about it for right now uh, this is Randy and I'll if you like the video tell us let us know and if there's something you want to see in particular let us know and we'll we'll try to do what you need and good evening